hi welcome to the next channel so after i shot uh, the recent uh, video episode uh, on uh, control plane and uh, data plane uh, in networking i got a few emails and uh, also i had some uh, sessions uh, with my uh, students so, and often uh, there is this uh, thing uh, popped up about uh, network processors so, so since uh, we now have uh, socs uh, which is quite uh, popular that includes raspberry pi or any such you know uh, embedded uh, or uh, uh, system on chip processors so, so now question arises uh, what could be a network processor and what constitutes a network processor versus uh, what are these socs versus the you know generic computing platform so it is uh, quite understandable that you know people do get kind of confused and i do got a lot of queries and also some uh, cases we are discussing about this fpgs and stuff okay so this is quite uh, you know uh, i mean i do have students who are from uh, embedded or hardware background so they know certain things they are confused about certain things but uh, the students uh, or uh, viewers who are from core uh, you know computer science uh, uh, background are aware of uh, uh, some of the software aspects but they are confused about the hardware aspects okay so i thought uh, this is why i'm thinking uh, uh, to cover about the same and then i thought uh, let me cover about this uh, network processors and we can discuss uh, uh, in depth in each subsequent episodes uh, so that it gives some kind of uh you know visibility and uh, some kind of awareness okay so if you think about a network device uh, uh, when you think about a network device like a router so i do discussed uh, we call something called a service traffic and service packets and uh, stuff like that and as well as service ports so, so when you think about a network router or uh, some manageable switch uh, the you know pcs or laptop whatever you connect to the switch uh, to its regular ports you can imagine uh, i mean we can call that as a service port so whatever the regular traffic goes through that network switch is the service uh, traffic and any control uh, data or any control packets like http or all that layer 2 slow protocols so can be regarded as a control uh, you know packets so, and uh, there is also another terminology we use as uh, slow path and the fast path uh, you know data so uh, slow path data constitutes all this control data and uh, which is why you have this layer 2 slow protocols because they are not regular traffic they are control traffic okay they are control packets okay uh, which is to control this network appliances so that includes sometimes even this routing protocol uh, packets and other stuff so you have this uh, slow path and you have the fast path and the whatever constitutes the fa fast path is what uh, can be optimized if it is done on a dedicated network processor rather than on a generic compute platform so the generic compute platform that includes also uh, these uh, you know socs uh, arm based socs which you get so the soc is going to run some linux and once you start processing the packets in this soc it is not going to be efficient uh, it will be processed in the operating system like i said the data plane is in the operating system and it is not going to be efficient and which is why if you have any dedicated network processor see the network processor is a dedicated processor it does this routing or switching whatever it is or that includes even sometimes firewall or whatever it is it does in the hardware layer so it does in the processor and this processor can be sometimes built via fpga and or it can be done via a dedicated chip so it again that's where the fpga comes into the picture sometimes you can take an fpga which itself is a programmable ic as you know uh, fpga stands for field programmable ic whatever it is gate array or whatever so let us just google fpga fpga so it itself is like a programmable chip okay you can see your field programmable gate array so which means uh, it is a chip 
after you program you can make that chip to work in a specific way so this is not any memory chip this is not any ram this is not any sort of uh, uh, you know storage chip instead the um, fundamental aspect of this is to make uh, a generic fpga chip to work into in a different way so you can make uh, in any vpn accelerator hardware you can make this chip into some compression device encryption uh, chip so that uh, you can encrypt data on a chip rather than in a software in linux kernel or user space whatever it is so instead of doing in a software you can now do it on a chip so you can program it and do something like this you can make it into some kind of microcontroller you can make it into any way you want so one among the ways uh, you get network processors is also you can take any fpga and you can program and make some kind of custom network processor so that it can get that fast path data i mean to say the service data and it can uh, process that data and it can work as a router switch whatever it is okay now again uh, there will be confusion for beginners that what constitutes a router what constitutes a switch i have discussed um, time to time in multiple videos if i remember any links i can uh, pass on the same uh, but in a way to give a quick overview uh, a switch is a layer 2 device it works in layer 2 sort of a router is a layer 3 device because it does layer 3 or network uh, uh layer packet processing it uh, checks uh, what is the ip address it checks the destination ip address and it routes the packets and it only touches up to layer 3 but since uh, uh, some modern routers also include some firewall features it also includes some additional ids ips features as an add-on now we cannot strictly term a router as a layer 3 device which is why I'm saying if you go with the Cisco CCNA definition uh, in CCNA exam, they are going to ask what a switch works on which layer, what a hub and which layer it works, a router works in which layer. If you want to pass in that exam, you need to mention as a router is a L3 device, a switch is a layer 2 device, a hub is a, uh, it just works in physical layer, which is l1 okay but if you see uh, in real world a switch although it is layer 2 if the switch has any additional features it does some kind of ip filtering it does have some weird extra feature like firewalling or some kind of feature now the switch is not anymore a strict layer 2 device so which is why again it's all conditions apply a router is a layer 3 device but conditions apply if it has more features then it may work in any layer so which is why i'm saying all these network uh, appliances uh you know like i discussed in the data plane and control plane i'm again saying you in case if you haven't watched uh, uh, that video series i strictly recommend you to watch that video along with this video so that you get more uh, accustomed with some more terms okay so which is why i'm saying uh, the data plane uh, is nothing but uh, the you know is the one which does processing of regular uh, packets the service packets uh, which also constitutes the fast lane or the fast path and uh, whatever processes that fast path can be done in an operating system and if it is done in the operating system the data plane is in the software layer if it is done in a network processor or some custom fpga chip or some switching device or layer to switch core or something like that then you know data, data, data plane is in the hardware so it is going to do that same operation in some firmware okay so which is why if you check any network processor see you can google as network uh, processor and uh, you can check any network processor you can find some architecture uh, pictures like you know you can see here there is a network processor and the below there is a fee 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 and uh, stuff like that and uh, it may have internal uh, some memory or it may have some uh, ram which is uh, associated with this network processor any any kind of combination but i'm just saying you it is a, a much easier way to visualize this uh, a network processor let me just pull this paint application and uh, you can visualize unlike a regular processor see if you take a regular processor like intel chip or something like that okay it is going to have some uh, pcie lanes it is going to have some pcie lanes 
PCIe lanes and it is going to have uh, you know the RAM uh, stuff. I'm uh, I'm not an expert, so I'm just giving a vague idea. Apart from VCC ground and all those connections, it is going to have all the stuff, and it may have some external or internal clock or something like that. So this is what you know clock something like that. So this is what constitutes a generic CPU. Okay, so let's uh, take an example. It's a generic CPU. But if you think uh, something like SOC, the SOC, the name itself says it's a system on chip versus this is a strictly a processor versus an SOC is an entire system on chip. Whereas in this case, let's assume you have this USB port. So technically what you are doing is you are taking this uh, PCIe lane. Okay, you have this, uh, you know, PCIe. You can see here this is the PCIe bus and to this PCIe bus you are uh, you know putting that uh, whatever uh, stuff and uh, from that you are getting this uh, USB ports you know in this way and if you have uh, a sound card if you need a sound card you will be putting that stuff to PCIe you will be having a sound card connected to PCIe whether it is inbuilt in the motherboard or you slot uh, you know creative or some uh, sound card and then you put it on the motherboard whether it is soldered inbuilt or else you buy a separate sound card and slot it in the motherboard same thing with the VGA card or something so in a way this is what it happens so this is what it constitutes a regular uh, compute platform let it be a laptop or let it be a PC or something like that okay so this is what